Today I'm going to talk about net neutrality. Now, net neutrality has been a hot topic for many years, with companies like Google and Netflix on one side and Verizon and Comcast on the other. The debate? Will the internet remain fair and open forever? Well, on Friday, we may have actually gotten our answer when the FCC voted to reclassify internet service providers as common carriers under Title II of the Communication Act. What does that mean, you're saying? Well, good question. Well, in order to fully understand what happened last week, we need to go all the way back to a time before the internet existed. 1934. In 1934, the Communication Act was passed. Title II of that act created the idea of common carriers or in other words, a regulated entity that provides goods to people without discrimination. Now, Title II of the Act gave the FCC regulatory power over entities classified as common carriers, basically preventing them from doing pricing di differentiation or discriminating against different services. Sound familiar? Well, now let's go to where the internet actually exists. Now, when the internet first started, everyone pretty much agreed that the government should stay out of regulating. There was so much innovation and creation going on that people didn't want the government to get involved too early. And for the most part, it didn't. In 2007, Comcast was caught throttling the service to BitTorrent users. When this came to light, a class action lawsuit was filed against them, which they settled out of court. However, this was the first time that internet users really saw the power that internet service providers had in controlling access to the internet. So in response to that, in December of 2010, the FCC created a set of net neutrality laws. Now, these rules stated that internet service providers had to provide transparency on how they were distributing broadband internet. It also prevented them from blocking any lawful application or services and said they couldn't discriminate against different types of traffic, meaning that streaming video, downloading music, and email all had to be treated the same. Well, in 2014, Verizon sued the FCC and won their case, throwing out the FCC's net neutrality rules. They claimed that since they weren't classified as common carriers, the FCC had no regulatory power over them. Which brings us to last week, when the FCC voted to reclassify all internet service providers as common carriers under the Title II Communication Act. At face value, what the FCC is doing appears to be good. Preventing internet service providers from charging more for streaming video, let's say, is a good thing. However, there are some legitimate concerns about getting the government involved in regulation of the internet. Skeptics of the ruling have a few concerns, the first one being innovation. They claim that government regulation will hurt innovation of the internet. However, the U.S. currently ranks 27th in internet speeds, and many of the European countries that rank ahead of us have strict net neutrality laws. So, who knows if it's going to really stifle innovation. The second concern is around privacy. Now, let's be honest. The government doesn't have a great track record in not spying on us. This ruling puts the FCC in a very sensitive place when it comes to information gathering. Questions around how the government will use and or abuse this power do seem legitimate. Now, the third concern is around overregulation. Does this ruling open the internet to more government regulation? The FCC hasn't released what they voted on, but some reports have the document at up to 320 pages, which seems kind of excessive. So look, what the FCC is doing appears to be a good thing. But the question comes, at what cost? Will they impose decency standards on the internet? Will they overregulate? Will it hurt innovation? All of that is yet to be seen. But this is where we come into play. Internet users need to be vigilant in, in keeping the government honest. That same passion and energy that drove thousands of people to sign petitions, call the FCC, force the FCC to look at this issue in the first place now needs to turn that energy and attention on the FCC. If it appears as though the FCC is going to overstep their boundaries, it will be on us to do all of that work again. This ruling ensures that the internet will remain a level playing field. It's on us to keep it that way.